Private Internet Access is an awesome low-cost VPN service with unlimited data for just $2.91 a month. Grab yourself a copy today at the link below and start browsing privately. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and we've been checking out a number of SSDs on the channels lately and I've definitely been asked quite a lot, what should I be looking for when buying a new SSD? Now I've responded individually with some ideas and things that I personally look for and we've also too done a couple buyer's guide of SSDs which probably need a refresh for 2019 but we've gone ahead and done some videos in the past but today we're going to be really covering five things you really need to think about when grabbing yourself a brand new SSD. Now there's are the things that I personally look for but do let me know down in that comment sections what do you look for when you are looking for an SSD some people it's all about the price some people it's all about the brand so do let me know what you think down again in that comment sections now today we won't specifically be looking at only SATA drives or only NVMe drives these are kind of ideas and concepts that you can apply to any SSD and I guess sort of a lesser extent hard drives but they're definitely different technology but with that being said Let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I always consider in my SSDs is the flash type. If it doesn't have very good flash or very reliable flash, I straight up don't even consider it because the job of an SSD at the end of the day is to store data and if the thing that's storing data isn't very good, I'm not spending my own money on it unless I guess it's for one of these videos. But either way, the flash is always the first thing that I'll consider on my SSD. Whether it be the type of flash or the brand of flash, it is something that's very important to me. Now, you may be thinking, okay, well, the flash is interesting there, but why do I really need to consider it? And the answer is not all companies make flash that also to make SSDs. For instance, some of the cheaper drives that we've been checking out for Amazon make the SSDs, but they don't make the internals. For instance, companies like Anaconda or Dogfish or Fatty Dove all make the SSDs and they assemble of Things, but they don't make the flash that goes inside of this. Now, the general rule of thumb is to buy the SSD from the people who also do make the flash because they're going to keep the good stuff for themselves and sell off all the bad stuff. So if you're Samsung, you're going to keep the best Samsung flash memory modules you make and put in your Samsung SSDs, whereas the sort of lesser grade stuff and the not as good stuff but still definitely okay stuff is going to be sold off to another company. And that is where I generally like to go with the company who makes the SSD and makes the flash generally make a better product there. Because again, if you think about it, what company in their right mind is going to sell off their good quality stock to another company and then use the less quality stuff for themselves. So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind is the manufacturer of the actual SSD. And I'll leave a link down in that description box to, I believe it's a Wikipedia article about different flash manufacturers and really whatever flash manufacturer it is that also too makes SSDs is probably a good place to start. Another thing to consider is actually the type of flash on this guy, whether it be SLC, MLC, TLC, or even the new uh, QLC memory modules or 3D NAND, all these different types of things is something you do want to consider. Now, that said, there's not as much choice out there. You can't buy the Samsung 9 whatever it is with QLC or MLC. It's not like it's interchangeable like that, but it is still something you may want to keep in mind. For instance, the new QLC uh, memory SSDs are known for slightly less longevity than, uh, for instance, SLC chips. However, there are different drawbacks and advantages for different memory technology. So uh, when you are shopping for an SSD in that flash particular market, do definitely do some research into there. It's a little bit outside of the scope for this video because there's a lot I could talk about when it comes to different SSD uh, memory technologies and maybe I'll have to make another video about this but uh, all in all do keep in mind the different technologies that are being used. I guess also too one quick other thing that's also still technically part of the actual flash is the actual capacity of it. Whilst this could be its own topic I mean what capacity storage do you want but the actual capacity of storage really does matter because drives that are up in the 250, uh, 500 and even one terabyte range will outperform these smaller 120 gigabyte models. This has been something that's been with SSDs literally from day one, the bigger the capacity, generally speaking, also to the faster speed. So if you're buying, say, a SATA drive and you want to get max speeds out of that SATA drive, try and buy the largest capacity drive for the money you're paying uh, because that is going to have slightly better speeds. Next up is the controller. So here in 2019 and really the past few years, the controllers on SSDs have played less of a role in how fast your SATA drive is going because let's face it, SATA, we're basically maxing out. It's really in the NVMe 
market where we're still trying to push the limits of these drives and still running into other limits like heat is a problem. But uh, in today's market, controllers are definitely something that you need to consider but aren't exactly the world's biggest deal because a lot of the big manufacturers that make controllers are basically really good manufacturers. They're any kind of the lesser stuff is either completely died out or there's some other sort of not that great use for it. If we rewind to maybe 2013, 2012 kind of timing when we had different manufacturers doing different things. For instance, we had companies like Kingston who went ahead and used our on-the-fly memory compression based controllers to offer a different experience for the end user. Now, in the long run, we all know what happened with Kingston drives and their on-the-fly memory compression and we know what happened with those controllers, but uh, at the end of the day, it is still something you do want to consider. For a lot of companies who make flash, they generally speaking also to make controllers, so trying to get a company that makes the flash and the controller is definitely a good idea, but other third-party manufacturers like Silicon Motion do make some really good options. You may have heard me say these names like Silicon Motion 2248 or 2256 are definitely pretty good controllers for that mid to high-end type SATA application. Obviously, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of other options from Silicon Motion, and there's still a couple other memory manufacturers out there that also do make controllers, so there's definitely quite the market out there, but generally speaking, in today's market, it's not like you're getting a really bad deal out of your controller, although there's still some other companies like AsSolid who make some just terrible controllers that really should stay clear of because they're just terrible, they have names of good controllers but they're really not good at all. So all in all though, keep an eye on the actual controllers there. Next up we have the interface and or standard. So this might go without saying that if you need to get an SSD that's in the M.2 factor, obviously look at an M.2 drive, but do keep in mind that just because the plug is the same it may actually be different or maybe even a completely different plug at that. A great example of this is MSATA versus M.2. A lot of people get these two different connectors mixed up. Yes, they are different and no, they are not interchangeable. I've seen a number of computers come to me now with an MSATA plug on the laptop and someone's tried to jam in an M.2 drive in there. Unfortunately, it is not interchangeable like that. And even just on the M.2 side, you've got NVMe and SATA. It is really, really confusing. So making sure you're actually looking at the right drive for your application is definitely important. And it's a little bit less tricky to figure out. I mean, just look at the plug and you look at the specs and standards, but it is something that I do keep in mind. The next thing I also do keep in mind is DRAM or whether it does or doesn't have DRAM. Now, a lot of people think that DRAM on SSDs or just RAM in general on SSDs is some sort of super fast caching technology where your data is going to be written to that RAM and then quickly written into the storage. That is really not actually the case. Maybe there's been an SSD in the past that has had this technology that somehow everyone thinks is what it does, but essentially what RAM does on an SSD is store sort of like a map of where the data actually is because the SSD itself sees all the ones and zeros, whereas the operating system like Windows, Mac OS or Linux asks for a file. So let's say that you're trying to open up that random cat picture. Windows is going to go ahead and request that cat picture and the SSD needs to know where all the ones and zeros that make that picture up are actually stored on the SSD. Now, a lot of the time, this actual map kind of data or this table, whatever you want to technically call it, there's a proper name for it, but we'll just refer to it as a map for this particular video. Where that map is generally stored is on the flash memory modules of the SSD in a known location. Now, the problem with this is flash, even the fastest NVMe based SSDs is still way slower than RAM. Even DDR2 RAM is still faster. So having RAM on your SSD will allow that map kind of file to be stored on that DRAM as well as a few other functions that do take advantage of DRAM for a much quicker situation. If you want to find out how much faster RAM is than a standard SSD, uh, check out that video. The results are really, really cool. So having DRAM or a DRAM portion on the SSD will speed up performance. Again, it can access that map and also too can help with things like longevity of the drive and various other bits and pieces do help out right here. Now, sadly, a lot of budget drives on the market today and a lot of just sort of mid-range drives even don't feature a DRAM package, which for me is something that's really disappointing. I'd love to see a day when we have DRAM on every single SSD, but if you are able to pay those few extra dollars to get an SSD with RAM on there, I definitely do recommend it. So it's something that I really do like to try and look for. Again, it's a little bit more expensive than a setup without, but generally speaking, it's going to perform better in the long run, which is something you definitely do want. Then we finally have brand. Now, just like when we talked about the flash and also to the controller, Buying from the right brand is also too really important. Now, I've also too checked out a lot of off-brand and unknown branded SSDs here on the channel in the recent past, and uh, yeah, some of them can be a little bit sketchy. So picking the right brand to buy SSD is definitely really, really important. 
one factor here is try and go for a company that makes everything inside the SSD, not just sticks a label over the top of it. There are a couple exceptions out there and we'll touch on them in just a moment, but try and buy from a company that makes the flash, makes the controller, and overall puts it into one package. The reason why you want to try and do this is the general rule of thumb is that they generally know what they're doing with their own hardware and they can build a package that might be ever so slightly better. Sure, if you benchmark a SSD that's made all in-house by one company versus one that's a bit in pieces from everywhere, you're going to be seeing roughly if not the same type of performance, but you may see different longevity, you may, say, uh, you may see different kind of support over time, and you may see a lot of differences that aren't exactly big performance numbers, but are still things you do want to consider when you are buying a new SSD, because let's face it, you're not buying a new SSD every year, so you're going to be keeping it for a little bit of time, if not quite a bit of time, so you do want to think about what's happening in the future with your particular drive. So an example of this might be a Samsung drive. Samsung makes um, flash modules, they make controllers, and they put the whole package together for an SSD. Now I did mention there are other companies out there that just rebrand things. So for instance, WD is a great example of this. WD themselves actually own SanDisk, which is a major flash memory manufacturer. SanDisk also too makes internals like SSD controllers and also to uh, DRAM, and not to mention uh, the flash memory modules themselves. So if you get a SanDisk SSD, pull off the SanDisk sticker and throw a WD one on, it's now a WD drive, which is really good to see. And as we checked out, and I think that video and we'll chuck some B-roll on the screen, we can see that inside a WD green drive is all SanDisk hardware, which is absolutely fine. It's all made in-house by SanDisk, and as WD owns SanDisk, it's not bad quality parts either. So all high quality parts are going into these drives, which is where I really do like to see. Again, try and steer clear of other unknown brands. I mean, sure, we check them out on the channel and do our own testing, and most of the time they're generally okay, but you really don't want to be going into like spec tech land of uh, memory modules right there. So all in all, try and get something that is made by one company, and if you're not exactly sure what's going on, again, I did mention early in the video that I've left a link to flash memory modules down in that description box, so check out the companies that make the flash, see if they also do make SSDs, because chances they do, and chances are their SSDs aren't bad. So again, something something like a Samsung SSD or a WD-1 are great examples of a company that makes everything, or a company that just buys a whole package from another company and just whacks a sticker over the top. So there we go, the five things that I try and keep in mind when considering a new SSD. Now that said, there's a lot of things to consider when buying a new SSD. For example, price is definitely something a lot of people consider, but do let me know down in that comment section, what would you consider if you are buying buying yourself a brand new SSD. Does performance upfront matter more than longevity or does longevity matter more than performance upfront? So do let me know down below. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll leave some links to SSDs down in that description box and I'll catch you all in the next one.